Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Gary Berry Stadium. It is the 2020 football season, about a month plus delayed, but we are about ready to get underway here from Gary Berry Stadium. Tonight's week one, COVID season 2019 or 2020, uh, between Discovery Canyon, the Thunder come down to take on the Mitchell Marauder. That is what is first here at the stadium for you. I am Barry Reed, the broadcast announcer and segment producer for District 11 Media Production Services. We thank you so much for the tune in and for our friends uh, viewing in the northern parts of El Paso County and the Discovery Canyon Thunder fans. Uh, welcome to the District 11 YouTube channel and we expect a Good ball game tonight. Discovery Canyon, very strong. 13th year for Sean Mitchell, the head coach. Eight straight playoff trips. You know all about it if you're a DCC fan. From being the number one seed, being ousted in the first round of the playoffs, to losing in the finals just a couple of years ago, back in 2016. But talking to the DCC coaches, they have reloaded and they are ready to make another run at another state title. Over on the Mitchell side of things, it is a new head coach. The Jeremy Callip era has begun for the Marauders here at Mitchell. After a two and eight season last year, Corey Anderson is not returning to the Marauders sidelines. And there you see Coach Callip and the Marauders and if the camera work looks a little wonky tonight and the announcing is a little wonky, uh, no excuses, folks. I'm one man banding it here due to COVID restrictions. So I'm running camera and trying to talk at the same time. It's kind of like chewing bubble gum and talking at the same time or walking at the same time. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But we have high school football here in Gary Berry Stadium, which we are greatly excited for. The officiating crew you can see down on the field as they start together, the captains will be the Hall of Famer, the crew of George Demetrio. Got a chance to say hello to the Hall of Famer earlier and everybody is doing well and we are ready to get this one underway. These two teams have played six times in their history. Discovery Canyon has won all six times and none of the games have been very close as Discovery Canyon has won, has won the six games scoring 300 points and allowing just 62 points in those, ten, or in those six contests to the Marauders. Beautiful day here at the stadium. We had temperatures in the 80s today. And the temperature right now in the 70s, I'm sure. You can see the shadows from the press box just starting to cross the field. But there is no wind to speak of. No bad elements to uh, affect the play. Just two squads ready to go and it is time for the national anthem here
of the Discovery Canyon Thunder crowd right below us in the press box tonight on this beautiful night. And we are about to get underway with something I know many of us have been waiting and wondering about since March 16th. But it is here. The COVID precautions are in place. The regulations are being followed by the patrons and we have extra security to ensure that tonight here at the stadium. So sit back and enjoy this football game. Last year, Discovery Canyon finished 10 and two with a loss in the second round to Frederick and the Mitchell Marauders two and eight on the season to close things out. But a new coach, new attitude. That same Mitchell Pride getting ready to take the field now here at Gary Berry Stadium. Or, or the Marauders will be in their blue jerseys with the orange numerals as you see the kick team coming up. White with the gold numerals, or the, not the, gold, the silver numerals for Discovery Canyon. And Discovery Canyon will get the ball first. Mitchell will kick from south to north here at Gary Berry. And now some adjustment to the kicking alignment for the Marauders. Osvaldo Sanchez, the junior, about to get the season underway. And this is going to be a short kick, which will bound out of bounds at the 28 yard line. So a penalty for the offsides, which is an out of bounds kick. Let's see what Discovery Canyon opts to do. And it looks like we are going to go ahead and tee it up again and re-kick it. And Mitchell had teed it up at the 40, five yard penalty on market from back to the 35. And trying it again, this was going to spin near the sidelines and out of bounds again. So a couple of sprints for the Marauders kick team. And we are going to back the Marauders up five more and try this again. Discovery Canyon opting not to take the ball at the 40 yard or 35 and then 40 yard line. So now the kick comes from the 30 yard line. This one better in down the middle, picked up at the 29 yard line. And on the return, breaking tackles and finally brought down. Ball comes loose. They're going to say he was down by contact with the return. That was Justin Pruitt, the junior wide receiver 
for the Thunder. And they will start in Mitchell territory at the 46 yard line. Good field position. Kenneth Passion is the wide receiver, double slot set, double wing set they used to call it, now motion, and give it off to the fullback right up the middle, a big hole and a head for a gain of nine. That is Dylan Rain with the first carry of the game for the Thunder. Rain, a senior this year, only got three carries last year. He made the most of them with 41 yards and a touchdown. Discovery Canyon graduated 28 last year from the football team. Their five top receivers, their four top rushers, and all three quarterbacks. Now they face a second and one. Give up the middle by passion to Rain again, and Rain will pull his way inside the 35-yard line to the 34. First first down of the game for the Thunder. Devin Schreiber, Brent Knox, Tyler Cavalli, the middle three in that line for the Thunder. A couple of juniors and Schreiber, the senior. But they are moving the ball on this Mitchell defense. This time, give it to Rain again. Nice job by Edwards on the tackle for the Marauders. Short gain of three, we'll call it second down and seven. Give terrain off, actually fake terrain. Passion keeps it around the left-hand side. And he will make his way close to the 20-yard line, down to the 21. It'll be a pickup of nine and a first down for Discovery Canyon. They'll spot it back at the 22. under center. This time the pitch comes around. Ball on the ground. Turnover. Bounced on by the Marauders. So the Marauders get the first break. They will take over at about the 26 yard line. So everything was going the Thunder's way until the turnover. Now first and 10 for the Marauders. Quarterback to start the season is Macy Davenport, the 5'5", 130 pound senior. And timeout for the Mitchell Marauders. 9.28 left to go in a scoreless first quarter here from Gary Berry Stadium. And not the way Jeremy Calif wanted to start his first drive first possession with the Marauders as their head coach, needing a timeout before the first play. So the Marauders come out of their Sideline huddle. Go, 
Macy starts a man in motion to the right, fling it out there. That pass is a little bit high. Scrambling after it to make sure that it didn't turn into a fumble was Cruz Garcia, the 5'6 junior out of the running back. So Mitchell comes out trying to exploit the left side of that Discovery Canyon defense. Now they'll face a second and 10. Garcia will line up to the left of Davenport. Two receivers to the right. And Davenport is in trouble and he is gonna go down. The first sack of the season. And it is Daniel Munn that looks like with the sack, it'll be a loss all the way back to the 16 yard line. So a loss of 11 to bring up third and 21. Took that, that might have been Silas Janelle with the sack. Quick toss and throw in the home run ball for Sanchez. Sanchez was out there, but that ball had no chance of being completed. That was just a quick get it in your hands and fire it out there. See if you can make the completion to Sanchez. But it will bring up fourth and 21 at the Mitchell 16. And Sanchez will drop back to punt now. Three Thunder stand back at the 45 of the Marauders. Now we got a late man getting off for the Thunder. No flags down. And this takes a good Mitchell roll. Now it's kicked. And Mitchell back on top of it. What a turn of events. Hustling down on the special teams and making the play. That was Corey Davis for the Marauders as it kicked off of the receiver. And Mitchell will be in business at the 22 yard line. Now George Demetrio and the members of his crew are meeting back at the Mitchell 40. Still don't see a flag, so I would have thought maybe an illegal substitution as the Thunder were trying to run somebody off. And there is George Demetrio. And if I read George Demetrio right, he called an illegal touching on the Marauders with the ball going over to the Thunder at the 39. Unfortunately, we don't have replay capabilities this year due to the COVID restrictions. But now the Mitchell offense is back on the field, so I'm not sure what means of confusion we have going on. 8.28 to go. They set the chains on the far side. Mitchell comes out. Davenport in the backfield. And now we're going to have a delay. Oh, timeout called by Discovery Canyon. Teams retreat to their respective sidelines. There you see the time, 8.28 to play. Each team has used their first time out of the season. 
We are scoreless, and that is the second turnover for Discovery Canyon. The fumble on the reverse, and then the muff punt. Mitchell looking to take advantage of this second turnover. think we've got it all sorted out and it is first and 10 for the Marauders all at the 23 yard line Davenport with Garcia to his left give it to Garcia little stutter step he will get ahead for a hard fought yard down to the hand off to Cruz yard. Garcia gets one on the play brings up second down Tackle in there, Aiden Emmons, the senior linebacker. So second and nine. Now the Marauders send three receivers to the left side of the formation. Garcia to the right and chucking it over the middle. Two receivers out there, but I think it was intended for the short man in the pattern for the Marauders. But well overthrown, and now we have a flag on the field at the 30. And we will wait for George Demetrio. Roughing the passer called on the Thunder. Unnecessary roughness. Roughing the passer called against the Thunder. So that will move automatic the ball first ahead. down. And present the first down to the Marauders. Moves the ball down to the 12-yard line, actually inside the 12-yard line. And with all these breaks for the Marauders, they really need to punch it in here to gain some confidence. This one flipped out. Davenport just trying to get rid of it. Garcia came back for it. But in the process, he's going to lose 12 back to the 23-yard line, wiping out the penalty advancement. So it will be second and 22 now for the Marauders all the way back at the 23-yard line. An offensive line for the Marauders, Baker, Soden, Dixon, Elmore, and Evangelista. Not able to hold up to the rush for Discovery Canyon right now. Three receivers left and a flag stops play. Delay of game against the Marauders is the call. So we'll back up five more. Early on, both of these teams shooting themselves in the foot. First game of the season for both of these teams in a short season. The season will be six instead of the traditional 10 games this year. Now the Thunder showing pressure. And this one is almost intercepted by Andrew Keegan, the junior linebacker. Mitchell was throwing for the tight end in their situation of the H-back, Sanchez. And that one nearly got intercepted. Timeout again called by Jeremy Callip. That is timeout number two. And the timeout comes with 6.59 left on the clock and still scoreless. Mitchell trying to cash in a turnover on the muff punt. But this Discovery Canyon de defense has not allowed this Mitchell offense anything tonight.
Discovery Canyon student section sharing between two sections of themselves. But the Mitchell student section is trying to respond. Davenport puts the ball on the ground trying to escape. It will be covered by Quentin Elmore. And it will result in another loss of the yard, but good head up play by Quentin Elmore, the 5'10 junior falling on that loose ball. And it will be fourth and 27 for the Marauders now, all the way back at the 28-yard line. Just no protection out of that offensive line early here for the Marauders. Unable to run the ball to set up the play-action pass or anything in the passing game. And now a deep shot down the right-hand side. Caught for a touchdown! Converting on fourth and 27. Touchdown, Marauders. What's a gutsy call? And no flag on the play to wipe it out. Ralph Cushion, the 6'1 sophomore, looks like made the catch. So Cushion with the touchdown from Davenport. Mitchell lining up to go for two. Now waiting for the chain gang to get in position. The marker is down. Quick throw out to the left, this one's intercepted. And heading down the sidelines. And that will be the end of the play for the Thunder. So Mitchell converts on an improbable fourth and 27 to take the lead with 6.09 in the game. And the score is six to nothing in favor of the Marauders as they were able to cash on the turnover on the muff punt by the Thunder to take an improbable early lead here. The way things are going for the offense, all the offense for the Marauders has come on one play. A deep ball down the right-hand side. Pruitt back for the Thunder. Stands at his 20. He has company back there, but the other player's jersey, and we have a penalty that is moving the ball all the way to the Discovery Canyon 45. Not sure where that penalty came about. I don't remember hearing from George Demetrio. Sanchez puts a foot into it, drops it down into that corner, and once again out of bounds. So this will back Mitchell up five. Dylan Rain, I believe, is the other Thunderback standing at their own 10. Now the kick will come from the 50. And 
Sanchez puts the boot into it again, down into that corner. And the fourth kick tonight that sails out of bounds. And the teams will make their way back up the field and we will try it one more time. Edward Scott comes over to talk to Sanchez. Sanchez is getting some great spin on the ball to make it tough to handle, but he's got to get it closer to the center. Now they go on sides, and it is covered by the Thunder at the 44-yard line. And that is Aiden Emmons, the senior, falling on the ball. Now the Thunder will have it at the 44, first It'll be first and 10. 10 Thunder from the 44. Six oh nine to go here, Mitchell on top, six to nothing. And Passion under center. Fake the give, kip it around the left-hand side, and he's got the sidelines. And some blocking downfield. Passion finally run out of bounds. But not until he's close to the Mitchell 20 yard line. We'll see where they say, oh, they say he stepped out of bounds further upfield. They're gonna spot this ball at the 32 yard line. So a run of 24 by Kenneth Passion, the senior. Passion rushing last year, 20 carries for 242 yards and a couple touchdowns as a backup running back. Three receivers to the left. This time Passion will give it off and Rain will fight hard for five, five yards down to the 27 yard line. up second and five for the Thunder. Double wing, receiver to each side, and we've got a flag stopping the play. Let's go, Let's go, Delay of game called on the Thunder. They didn't get a, the playoff in the 25 seconds. So that will back them up five. And this was about the point on their first drive where they turned it over. Now they've backed it up to a second and 10. Jacob Willard checks into the game for the Thunder. Trenton Edgen checks out. Boot to this side, Mitchell in good position, but that opens up the, opens up Willard crossing for the completion and the running catch. And he's down to the 13 yard line with the first down for the Thunder. So nice roll out. Mitchell had three defenders there to create a wall. The passion was able to find the crossing Willard now Willard sets up at the left wing. Emmons is on the right side. Emmons goes in motion. Fake it to Rain, the keeper by Passion. 
Passion met at the line of scrimmage, bounces off and drives his way to the six. It will be a gain of seven and bring up third and three. So second down from the six yard line. Break the huddle. Justin Pruitt split far to the left side. Cameron Whittle, or check that. Receiver to the right. Give it straight off to Rain up the middle, and Rain vaults his way into the end zone. 3.42 on the clock, and the Thunder answer with the Rain touchdown from four yards out. Let's see if the Thunder decide to go for one or two here with the score tied. But an impressive answering drive aided by a couple of Marauder kickoff penalties and then the short onside kick attempt which gave the Thunder the ball at the 44 yard line. Now we have a flag on the field waiting for the call from George DiBitrio. Receiving the foul, Discovery Canyon takes the timeout according to George DiBitrio. So timeout for the Thunder here at Gary Berry Stadium. Our score with 342 in the first quarter is tied at six. District 11, the standout choice for excellence in education. Some may say it's a dedicated and talented staff who are devoted to the educational learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. And the kick is up and good by the Thunder. So the Thunder answer back. And with 342, they take the one point lead seven to six over the Mitchell Marauders. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for the tune in here on the District 11 Mitchell Athletics YouTube page. We will bring you a whole slate of games throughout the season. Sam James, the sophomore, on to do the kicking for the Thunder. Edward Scott back deep for the Marauders. And this one will sail into the end zone for a touchback. And the Marauders will start from their own 20-yard line on their third drive of the game. Well, they got a little bit of momentum 
with converting on fourth and 27 for the touchdown, only to see Discovery Canyon come thundering back, taking the 7-6 lead. Now let's see what Macy Davenport and this Marauder offense can respond with a drive of their own. Davenport under center, has Garcia out to the right. Quick throw into the flat is too tall. And a big hit out there by Kenneth Passion, playing strong safety for the defense. Second and 10, the Marauders trying to set up that, that, that screen out in the right flats. But Davenport has been high with every time he's thrown it out there. Sanchez lines up on the wing. Empty backfield, two receivers right for Davenport and false start on the Marauders. That is Sanchez on the outside getting an early start. That'll cost the Marauders five. Bring up second and 15. And obviously for the Marauders, Discovery Canyon's not gonna need much, of, much help tonight with the way they've dominated this series. You can't be giving them all these five yard penalties. 10 yards on each of the previous kickoffs and another five there. So three receivers in the H back to the right of the formation for Davenport. Davenport back looking up the left hand side throwing a skinny post and that will fall incomplete. Intended receiver for the Marauders is Demetrius Bigelow. So Mitchell trying a little bit of deception. But it's third and 15. Week one of the 2020 COVID-19 football season. COVID-19 delayed here tonight. Davenport in the shotgun. Quick toss, this one almost intercepted. Again, thrown high off the hands of the intended receiver. And that was Cushion who caught the touchdown. I don't know if the Marauders are trying to set something up for later in the game, but they've got to start completing that and giving their receivers a chance to make a play. Now it's just making it a long night as Sanchez stands back inside his five. And the kick is away and it comes down and it'll be fair caught at the 45 yard line of the Marauders. By passion. And so the offense will come back to work for Discovery Canyon. 322 left to go here in quarter number one. Let's see if the Marauders can manufacture another yet another turnover. They took advantage of the second turnover. Straight up the middle, the rain, rain busts a big hole, breaks the tackle and he'll be gone. And that will go 45 yards, one play and the touchdown for the Thunder who increased the lead to 13 to six. Dylan Rain picking up where he left off in limited duty last year. And Rain getting all the congratulations down there on that Thunder sideline. As he busts it for 45 yards out. Extra point now for the Thunder.
Sam James on for the kick. And that one is no good. So the lead stays at seven, 13 to six here. Three twelve left to go in the quarter. As George Demetrio and his crew gather down about the 10 to talk about things here and uh, their first game of the season here at Gary Berry Stadium. And Jeremy Callup over in his sidelines with his Marauders. Still a beautiful night. The lights are in full effect here at Gary Berry Stadium, but there is still a large amount of light in the sky, even though the sun has gone down. It will darken here shortly, as it tends to do in the first week of October. Clancy with the kick, and this will go on a bounce into the end zone. So Mitchell will take over at the 20 for the second straight possession. And on the extra points for Discovery Canyon, I need to make a correction. It was either Jason Albane or Connor Clancy, two or three, doing the kicking for the Thunder tonight. Davenport in the shotgun. Quick give off and too much pressure coming straight through for the Thunder. Knifing through to make the play, that was Silas Janelle, the junior. Second down, loss of four on the play, second and 14. Second and 14. This time they slip, slip it to the right hand side to Garcia. Who's able to get a nice gain out across the 20 yard line, out to the 22. And it will be third and eight for the Marauders. Give off to Garcia, he's going to get swallowed under, fake the toss. That play is going to lose about four yards. With the tackle, Devin Schreiber for the Thunder. That's going to bring up fourth and 12. Thunder drop back to return another punt. Ethan Emmons drops back now. They come up, they'll leave it empty. Mitchell, the offense on. So no punt for the Marauders. Trying to throw a quick out to Sanchez. Three Thunder there. It falls incomplete. And the danger with that is you just turn the ball over at the 19-yard line. 
given an extremely short field to the Thunder. First and 10. So a gutsy play that didn't pay off. Osvaldo, Osvaldo Sanchez, the intended receiver. Threw it in coverage. So now 56 seconds left to go before the half. And the Thunder looking to cash on a short field. Emmons in motion, give it to Rain. Rain breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and pulls his way close to the 15 yard line. Looks like they'll spot him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. So pick up a five, bring up second and five for the Thunder. Thunder right back up to the line. Oh, just coming into the huddle. Passion gets the play call, shoveled in from Trenton Edgen. Receiver right. Wing reverse and a keeper by Passion. Passion with a run to run to the corner and he is in for the touchdown. Four and a half seconds left to go on the clock. And Discovery Canyon able to cash another touchdown right here before the end of the quarter. 19 to 6 is the score. Keeper all the way for Passion. And now he'll come up that sideline. Get all the congratulations from his coaches. See if Discovery Canyon decides to try to go for two here to make it an even 21. And they will, well, no kicking team is on. Mrs. Clancy, pressure comes off the side for the Marauders. The kick is up and good, but the Marauders able to get some pressure coming off the side, not fast enough to get there. So our score with four and a half seconds left to go here in the first quarter in the COVID-19 COVID week one here in 2020. And it is Discovery Canyon 20 and the Marauders 6. She'll tee it up at the 40. And this one skips into the end zone for the touchback, and the Marauders will start the last four and a half seconds here of the first quarter from their own 20. Good crowd down below us for Discovery Canyon. The stadium has been socially distance indicated. So we get proper spacing and there's security monitoring the stands to keep everybody safely socially distanced. So two receivers to the right for the Marauders here on what should be the last play of the first quarter. The snap high over the head and just falling on it, and he'll be down back at the 10-yard line. 
And a loss of 10 to end the first quarter was Davenport. And there is the horn for the first quarter. We'll switch ends of the field, and when we come back, it will be the Marauders' second and 20 from the 10 at the north end here on the District 11 channel. Colorado Springs School District 11, the standout choice for excellence in education. Some may say it's a dedicated and talented staff who are devoted to the educational learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. Back at Gary Berry Stadium, getting ready to start week two. Or getting ready to start the second quarter of week number one. And the score is the DCC Thunder 20 and the Mitchell Marauders 6. Mitchell actually opened the scoring. Converting on a fourth down. And breaking out of trouble and throwing it out of his own end zone instead of being trapped. And complete back to the 20 yard line was Davenport. That's complete out there to Ralph Cushion. So now third and 10. Trouble on the snap, and this ball just thrown out by Davenport this time to the left side is going to bounce to the intended receiver. Incomplete, and that will bring up fourth and 10 for the Marauders. And the punt team being called for by the Mitchell coaches here. 11.13 to go, just underway in the second quarter here at Gary Berry Stadium. Sanchez stands inside his 10 waiting for the punt. It's a good punt away high. Fielded at the 47 of the Thunder. Hit and fumble. Mitchell back on top of it. So a third turnover by Discovery Canyon. And it's recovered by the Marauders. It'll be Marauders first and 10. To see where they spotted here. The little marker is at the Mitchell 49, but they picked that up, and it looks like they're going to spot that at the Discovery Canyon 49-yard line. So another break. Second miss cue by the punt receive team for the Thunder. Gives Mitchell another opportunity to try to close this gap. Matt Thompson with the hit and recovery for the Marauders. So first and 10 for the Marauders. And a third and final timeout taken by Jeremy Callip and the Marauders coaching staff. 
You can tell it's week one when you've gone through all three of your first half timeouts and you know, there's still almost a full second quarter to play. Very reminiscent of an early preseason game in the NFL. Twenty to six in favor of Discovery Canyon. But Mitchell with first and ten on the DCC forty nine. And the Marauders come out of the huddle, lined up, ready to go. Under lined up, five on the rush, coming through. Nice pass completed, just crossed the line of scrimmage into the flat. And that is cushion for the Marauders. And cushion will be ahead for a gain of five. So the Marauders, with one of the few positive offensive plays tonight, they have really had Davenport under extreme duress, trying to make any kind of a completion. Now they got three receivers, four receivers to the left, counting the H-back. Roll out Davenport down the seam, complete to Sanchez. And Sanchez has a first down inside the 20 yard line. Down to the 15 yard line. So Mitchell has found something. I don't know what it is they found, but all of a sudden the passes they were having trouble completing are getting completed. So now first and 10 from the 15 for the Marauders. And the pass over the middle complete inside the 10 and fighting his way towards the goal line inside the five. That'll be another Mitchell first down. So Mitchell has found something and we have got a Marauder very slow to get up. Now he does. Gets his helmet put back on. Now he's limping off the field. That looks to be Sanchez. Mitchell with no timeouts here. Scoreboard is showing one, but I thought they had used all three. And the clock starts and the Marauders have a first and goal. Ball spotted at the four yard line. And a keeper for Davenport around the outside. And Davenport into the end zone. There is a flag at the four. So we will await the call, but Davenport into the end zone on a quarterback keeper. And it's going to come back. The penalty on first indication from George Demetrio. Is the penalty will be against the Marauders holding against the Marauders, so that's going to back him out to the 14-yard line. Let's see if the Marauders can recover. Nine twenty-nine on the clock before halftime. Now the official stopping play momentarily. It looks like they're checking the down after the penalty.
It was first and goal from the four when Macy ran it in, but there was a holding penalty, so it should be first and 14 now. Davenport back, flag flies from the near side judge, and Davenport is down. Set Silas Janelle with the sack. All the way back to the 20 yard line, call it a loss of six on the play. But we do have the flag. Motion offense will be declined. The result of the play is a sack and it will be Mitchell facing second and night second and goal from the 20. This one bounces back to Davenport and he quickly just launches it down the left-hand side. No chance of a completion there as the pressure was coming from the Thunder once again. It will be third and 20. Intended receiver was Demetrius Biglow. Whistle stopped the play before it gets underway, and we have a false start on the Marauders again. So that will back them up to the 25 and make it third and goal from the 25. Marauders had great momentum on this drive. They were able to hit short passes in the heart of that Thunder defense. But now penalties have pushed them out from first and goal at the four, wiping out a touchdown run by Davenport, pushed them all the way back out to third and goal from the 25. Four receivers to the right for Davenport, throwing down the seam. This one's almost intercepted. Back in the coverage was William Davis, the senior corner for the Thunder. And that will bring up fourth and goal from the 25. 8.23 on the clock before halftime. Marauders with a great chance to answer back after the turnover on the muff punt. They go down, they went down, looked like they had the score set, but lost it to penalty. Now Davenport throwing down the seam again. This one is picked off. And with room to run, down the near sideline, picking up blockers. And this will be a Discovery Canyon touchdown. With the interception is Justin Pruitt, the free safety. His first score as a Thunder. Comes on a long interception return. He was playing center field, waiting for that pass to come. And when it did, he knew exactly what to do with it. 26 to 6 at the 804 mark. And the Thunder had made it a 20-point advantage. Clancy on for the extra point. And good. 27 to 6, 8.04 left before halftime here at Gary Berry Stadium. 
Mitchell with the turnover and Discovery Canyon able to cash after Mitchell was unable to cash on the Discovery Canyon turn turnover. Their third of the night. Such a beautiful early October night for football here in the Pikes Peak region. But I do miss seeing that first big orange harvest moon of the season from the press boxes we have done for so many years now here. Clancy puts his foot into it. And whistle stopped the play on the touchback. Still 74 degrees out there. Absolutely beautiful night for football. I saw the signal for a touchback. The ball must have gone out of bounds. My apologies. Now they're waiting for a different ball to be brought in. So, so far the story of the game, <laughs> I would hate to uh, Kickoffs out of bounds would be the story of the game, but Mitchell has had five on the night, and Discovery Canyon with one of their own here just now. And this one scribbed on the ground, takes a big high hop, tough to handle, but gathered in at the 20 and swarmed underneath. Right there like the ball would come loose, but I saw no signs from the officials. And that was Biglow with the return for the Marauders. And there is a signal it will be Marauders ball first and 10 from the 27 yard line. First and 10 Marauders from the 27 yard line. If you recognize the voice of the PA announcer, that is Grant Meach. Former sportscaster for one of the local stations. Great to have Grant up handling the PA duties for these games. So the Marauders were able to find some things to work on that last drive. Let's see if they can capitalize this time. Down by 21 now. Give it off around the near side, reversing his foot, at, uh, reversing his field. Picks up a nice block and gets ahead for, well, I thought he got a couple, but he actually is going to lose a yard. It'll be second and 11. Taiwan Stewart with the carry. That was Ty Stewart, the 5'10 senior, 165 pounds. Gets it back, but muscle one on the play. Second and 11. So second and 11. Three receivers to the near side. Throwing for Edwards. 
for Edward Scott. Outside the 30 and a little bit too high. Davenport has been under so much pressure here tonight. He is rushing his throws and not giving his receivers too good of a chance. But again, he has been under extreme duress. Now third and 11. And now flag flies as the give goes into the middle. It's gonna lose another yard. Motion on the Marauders, that will be declined. The result of the play is another loss of one. And it'll bring up fourth and 12 for the Marauders. And the punt team comes on, Sanchez trots out onto the field. Emmons back with Pruitt standing at their 45. Good kick by Sanchez. Drive Emmons all the way back, still bouncing inside the 10. And the Marauders will down it at the nine yard line. So that is a kick of 66 yards with the bounce by Sanchez. Great job by Sanchez flipping the field for the Marauders. Osvaldo Sanchez, the 5'8 junior. Now let's see if the Mitchell defense can come up with a turnover here down in the deep end. And there's one of those first, first week mistakes, folks. I'm running the camera and trying to call the game. I apologize. I totally missed what would be a great punt by Sanchez. Caught it going off his foot, but missed it rolling down the field. Now Passion goes to work. Actually, they have changed centers. This is Trevin Aliso at quarterback, throwing down deep and almost intercepted. The intended receiver was Justin Pruitt. Two Marauders in coverage. So a gutsy call by Sean Mitchell throwing with your back to the goal line, with your backup quarterback. Alesso into the huddle now. Thunder leading 27 to six here. 6.23 before halftime. Give it straight up the middle and running over. Tacklers out to the 25 yard line. And that is Aiden Edmonds with the carry. So Sean Mitchell going to his bench, getting some work for his backups here in week one. Always a nice chance to get some guys that didn't get a whole lot of playing time in the previous years. Talking with one of the DCC coaches, they have so many kids out that it's tough for underclassmen to get time with the varsity. You've got to be really special. And they graduated 28 last year. And most of the guys that had stats in the stat book, this is Alyssa around the right-hand side. The pitch is made, room to run, one tackle to break. Breaks the tackle and down the sideline. All the way down to the 22 yard line. 65 yards on the carry.
We'll, we'll check out now. Alessio under center. Single back, Alessio rolls out to the right. Throws one up, almost intercepted. Right into the arms, I think that was Corey Davis down there. And the sophomore unable to come up with another turnover for the Marauders. That one could have been huge. As it could have stopped Discovery Canyon from another score right here before halftime. Second and 10. Ethan Emmons comes out now for a breather. Double wing set, single back. Motion and then reverse the motion. Give it to the fullback straight up the middle. And that is Aiden Emmons, the senior, with the carry. He'll pick up six. It'll be third and four. So Mitchell able to get their six points as they converted fourth and 27 on their second possession, cashing a turnover by Discovery Canyon on a muff punt. But since then, it has been all Discovery Canyon. Emmons off the right-hand side, inside the 10 for the first down. They'll spot him just shy of the nine. And it will be first and goal thunder from that point. substitutions Willard checking in bringing in the play for the Thunder straight off give off the left hand side and again it is Emmons He's inside the five yard line. Pick up a four and second and goal from the five. Benkin checks in, Darby Benkin checks in. He will move into one of the slot positions. Colin Cowell split to the right in this formation. Give it to the workhorse right up the middle and Emmons is into the end zone for the touchdown. 33 to nothing with 2.35 to go here before the half. And the Canyon, the Thunder have come back with 33 unanswered to take an impressive lead. So Trevin Alessio conducts his first scoring drive as the backup quarterback for the Thunder on the year. Clancy on for the extra point. Pressure coming by the Marauders off that left side. But Scott unable to get there. The kick is up and good. Four of five on the kicking for the night for Clancy. Just that one miss earlier. And with 2.35 left to go, it is 34 to six in favor of the Thunder. As they are picking up where they left off last year with their 10 and two record. An eighth straight trip to the playoffs. Marauders dream of getting back to the playoffs for the first time since 2003. And that was a couple of coaches ago. Tom Sandoval was the coach the last time the Marauders made the playoffs.
Jeremy Callip, the fifth head coach in Mitchell history, taking over the program this year. Jim Hartman, Tom Sandoval, then Archie Malloy, and then Corey Anderson. So a new era of Mitchell football starting here in 2020. And this is going to be a touchback. Strong leg by Clancy. Several touchbacks tonight, such a great weapon. As Walt Johnson and I talked about over the years, if you can start your opponent at the 20 yard line, it gives them a long way to go and it gives a great chance for your defense to make some plays. So first and 10 for Davenport. He sets Garcia to his left. Ball on the ground and Davenport has to fall on it. It will be a sack all the way back to the 12 yard line. Second and 18 coming up for the Marauders. Three receivers to the right. Handoff now reversing his field, but he's going to be trapped inside the 10 yard line and thrown for a loss of four. And that was Garcia with the carry. So now third and 20 for the Marauders. Inside of a minute and a half now before halftime. Will they give up the middle? It's gonna get him outside the 10 for a gain of a couple. But right there with the tackle was Trenton Edg Edgen. The linebacker for Discovery Canyon. That's going to bring up fourth and 18 for the Marauders. Clock rolling inside of one minute. Sanchez back to punt here on fourth down. Nine seconds left on the Play clock, now five. Snap is good. Kick is low and away. Scooped up here. And on the return, finding some seam down the right side. And a big hit laid inside the 20. Out of bounds, stopping the clock about the 18 yard line for a chance to, for Discovery Canyon to get more here. With the return, that was Cameron Whittle, the junior. Whittle returning that one for 30 plus and setting up the Thunder just inside the 20. But 17.3 on the clock. Let's see what Trevin Alesso can do here. Oh, change at quarterback. Kenneth Passons coming in. Justin Pruitt will be one of the receivers. So 17.3 left. Motion. Drop a roll passion out to this side. Looking downfield out into the flat and dropped. Put it on the hands of the receiver. That was Ethan Emmons, the slot receiver on the right-hand side coming all the way across. 
That takes ten or seven seconds off the clock. 10.7 to go here before half. that passion with the keeper he will get tripped up timeout taken by discovery canyon gain of one by passion down to the 18 that's going to bring up third and eight but more importantly there's only 4.8 on the clock I'm out here in week one of the COVID-19 shortened 2020 football season from Gary Berry Stadium. I am Barry Reed, the broadcast announcer for District 11's Media Production Services. We thank you for tuning in and welcome to our guests from the northern part of the city and the county from the Discovery Canyon folks. Seen a pretty good ball, uh, ball game out of your club here in the first half. It's up for three turnovers and a couple penalties. They've been solid, roaring back, answering with 34 unanswered points. Looking to see if they can put up a couple more here with just a couple seconds left. Receiver left, receiver right. Two wing for Passion, who's under center. Straight back, pressure coming straight up the middle, and he'll go down for the sack. Great defensive call by the Marauders, knifing through to stop. The scoring opportunity was Christian Zamora, the 5'10 junior, and that is the end of the first quarter. So Mitchell comes up with a big play. Yeah, they're down by 28, but it could have been worse as we go to halftime. Halftime here at Gary Berry Stadium, 34 to six in favor of Discovery Canyon. Makes Colorado Springs School District 11 the state of choice for excellence in education. Some may say it's a dedicated, intelligent staff who are devoted to the education and learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. There was a time not long ago, District 11 Media Production Services would roll their production truck to Gary Berry Stadium or to your high school gym and produce varsity sports. This team of dedicated staff members supervised student volunteers who were gaining hands-on experience producing high-quality televised events to the joy of family and friends and the community. But the technology being used was aging and also required a tremendous amount of manpower, making it difficult to cover all the sporting events involved in the school's many teams. Schools and their fans had to settle for the rationing of coverage, which did not sit well. Something had to give. Then the district found new technology that would restore the previous coverage and would allow for the expansion of the number of events that each school could produce. This new technology would empower student involvement in the planning and execution of the game broadcast like never before. Highlighted by taking over the roles of producer, play-by-play -play announcer, and color analyst. All that is left is a recruiting and organizing of the student producers and announcers. You. Yeah, you! The search is on for high school students, freshmen all the way up to seniors, who are looking for a new challenge. Students who envision a future where they will need sharp public speaking skills, or those who dream of being in the broadcast industry. And even those students who just like to talk. Does this sound like you? Are you ready to make the commitment to become the voice of your school's athletic teams? Contact me, Barry Reed, D11 broadcast announcer, to get more information. Barry.reed at d11.org or my phone, 520 2269. 
So morning meeting is basically, so we come in, we go to the gym, we sit in our grade levels, and then when we talk for, with our friends for a while, students can sign up to do a specific job. And so one student does good things, another does lunch, one helps with the Pledge of Allegiance. After we do the Pledge of Allegiance, we start to go to our classrooms. Good things looks like first we start to get a little small stuffed animal. It's a Snoopy and a pumpkin, and we get to throw it around and we say, "Does anybody have a good thing?" And we throw it around. Tell me something good. Mm -hmm. My good thing is that I can sing. thing is that yesterday I went to karate. We interviewed a lot of schools before we came here and I just was amazed at how much it mattered. The positivity of kids experience and the support structures and not thinking of kids as good and bad but giving them a chance to grow and that's what Capturing Kids Heart has done for the school and for the kids. Good morning, Anderson. Well, a social contract is the teacher prints out little piece of papers and we get to answer them, like, how do you want to be treated? We write our names on top to show that we are going to promise that and we are going to try to be as much as possible and try to show all of that to everyone in the whole community. I enjoy being a social contract reader because when guests come in, I get to shake their hand and know their name and like get to know them a little bit better. And I get to show them what we do around the classroom and how we do it. And uh, we just do a bunch of stuff around the classroom. A lunch is the teacher at the end of the day, she gives us a high five and she says, if it's Friday, she says, have a great week. But if it's just like um, Tuesday, she says, have a great day. Is your student lost in the world of education, not really liking school? Achieve Online is a place for them. Go for grades 6 through 12, and we strive first to build relationships, which in turn builds academics. We are unique and different from any other school. Flexible online and blended learning for students anywhere in Colorado. Take the next step and enroll today. My journey to become a school counselor started a long time ago. Um, I want to thank my parents, actually, for having me. I mean, that sounds kind of weird, but my mom always reminds me of that uh, on my birthday, of course. Um, I thank them for setting a foundation for me, for really caring about people. Um, I know they lived their lives as my dad was a teacher. Um, I actually had him as a ninth grade science teacher. Um, my mom was a music teacher. She tried to teach me piano lessons, but I wasn't a really good student. But both their examples and the work that they did in the schools, at church, really set that foundation for me um, to be just like that. My 28 years ago, I, I started off here in District 11 at Mark Twain Elementary as a sixth grade teacher. And that year was pivotal uh, for me to learn how to be an effective teacher. And, and really what that came down to was finding my heart and speaking from my heart. To, and I, I believe I learned a lot of that from Mr. Rogers. If you think about it, Mr. Rogers says, I like you just the way you are. And all these people in my life liked me just the way I was. I didn't have to pretend, I was just who I am. So Tim Garland to me is an amazing counselor. He um, understands what it takes to be successful in this business and he, and he puts his heart and soul in everything that he does. And so um, I know that, uh, you know, anytime Tim meets with a kid, he gets to know them at, a, at an exceptionally deep level and he cares more about those kids than, than I, I, I would have known was possible, honestly. Tim's just an amazing counselor that way. He has a very complete vision of what school counseling is and he sees his role to be truly a, a student support in all facets of whatever that student needs. He spends a lot of time working with the kids on their non-classroom concerns so that they can be successful in the classroom. He um, inspires us every day to 
take a deeper look about how we are working with students and how we are working with students with mental health needs. He makes sure that we, um, as a school, are looking at bringing in the best resources. If I care about that one person right now, there's something behind that. And I see this hurt. I see it in their heart. I see it in their eyes. And the light that goes on, the spark that is lit in their eye when I take time to call them by name, to give them a handshake, a smile, to play their favorite music, to go for a walk around the school. To take that time that I'm really caring about them has inspired them to turn their whole thing around. He epitomizes heart, caring, um, just wanting to do right by, by Doherty High School and by the kids we serve. He's always willing to jump in, be it through our AVID program. We're working with um, the CARD Education Initiative on their suicide prevention network and just the work that he's done to bring suicide to the forefront. I mean, he won't stop. He's, it's going to happen, and, and that's really what he's done is he's pushed so hard. I'm, a, I'm the district counseling chair. In the, uh, started six years ago, and before that time, or at that time, we didn't have leadership in the district office central office so I was liaison between the school counselors and, and the district um, did some professional developments on mental health on, on developing why do we do school counseling and a lot of things of that nature and really inspiring counselors um, since then we have leadership we have um, Valerie and Corey who are and others who are leading our way so I'm the Colorado School Counselor Association Region 12 representatives. So I'm representing all the counselors in Re uh, El Paso and Teller County, and that's quite an honor. One of the new things that happened this year was we have a counseling leadership cohort, and this is super exciting. We have a group of counselors in the district who are meeting together on a monthly basis. Um, yes, we drink coffee, lots of it, and uh, we need that um, camaraderie to talk about planning, talk about what we're doing, talk about this profession, and like I said, elevating this profession. Even though Tim has a huge um, workload and a lot of things going on and a lot of things on his plate, Tim will kind of forget about that and he will take the time to work with the student and take the time to make sure that that student feels cared about, to make sure that that student feels heard, um, and listen to. I could tell you many, many stories of the impact that not only I believe I've had on students, but really their impact is on me. And not only them, but my colleagues. And we have a lot of great counselors in District 11, a lot of super counselors who are really caring from their hearts. They're, they're going out of their way to really go the distance for students, to care, care for them, to help them with their social and emotional development, their academic future planning, everything. So we, we do a really good job in District 11 about um, educating the whole child. Nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains at the base of Pikes Peak is Colorado Springs, home to five military installations, the Olympic Training Center, many thriving colleges, fine arts venues, and School District 11 who created specialized education for gifted learners in the 1950s. At Colorado Springs School District 11, our gifted students become the creators, problem solvers, and innovators of tomorrow. District 11 is the largest school district in Colorado Springs, providing families with many different personalized gifted options. Given the choice of program options and opportunities that District 11 schools provide, there is a perfect fit for every gifted, talented, and high-achieving learner in the Pikes Peak region. We offer successful, safe, and purposeful learning experiences. We have qualified staff that recognizes exceptionality in academic and talent areas, identifying students as young as kindergarten. K-12 programming includes gifted magnet, international baccalaureate, Montessori, accelerated and honors options, a career and technical track, and junior ROTC, just to name a few. We believe that gifted students need an outlet to express their creativity and to collaborate with other like-minded learners. When gifted students are not satisfied with what they're learning, they lose creativity that could potentially solve problems and change the world. An identified gifted student expressed learning this way. 
Gifted classes give students like me who think differently a way to learn that fits our brain. Gifted has no boundaries in Colorado Springs School District 11. To find out more about all we offer gifted students, visit us at www.d11.org slash gt. You are the Colorado Samsung Cell for Tomorrow Let's Winners. Go! In Colorado, we tend to have a lot of hail, so we thought that that would be a really good thing to help out with the community. Our project is a very cost-efficient way to help protect your car, and you don't have to pay a lot of money for it. We're using a bunch of Newton's laws, force, gravity, drag. We're determining velocity, wind, water, and a lot of other elements. The research that we're doing is we've looked at a lot of like insurance companies to see how much people are like paying to um, get their cars fixed for having so much hail damage. The prize money that we are receiving already from Samsung and hopefully more will absolutely help uh, the students here at West to replace and to add on to um, our current technology needs. Not everybody can be on a computer at once. Sometimes everybody has to share, which isn't always the best, depending on what you have to do on the laptops. Uh, some of our technology is a little outdated and um, uh, slower in, in definitely in comparison to uh, today's standards. I have never really been part of something this crazy. Um, this is actually the second year that we've participated. The contest has been in place for 10 years. We chose to re um, be involved last year. Uh, we had about 30 students involved there, and we were state winners. And this year, we decided we wanted to um, give a different opportunity, so all of the students are different from last year. And we end up being state winners again, two years in a row. Usually whenever you get an opportunity like this, it isn't one that you would get every single time. So I think it's a very fun opportunity that could potentially open up a bunch of gates somewhat more metaphorically that could possibly help me and everybody else here in our future. So these students are, are students who have chosen to go above and beyond and, uh, and do something beyond the classroom and uh, because they you know really wanted to do something special and unique uh, that would uh, basically help and support their community and their school uh, and add to their their experiences here at West Middle School. What makes Colorado Springs School District 11 the standout choice for excellence in education? Some may say it's a dedicated and talented staff who are devoted to the educational learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. And welcome back to Gary Berry Stadium. The team's on the field getting finished with their post halftime warm ups. 34 to 6 is our score. Discovery Canyon scoring 34 unanswered points after Mitchell cashed a second turnover by the Thunder into points, converting on fourth and 27 to open the scoring at 6 nothing, but since then it has been all Discovery Canyon. Now, not to say that it has been perfect for Discovery Canyon. They do have four turnovers, uh, muff punts. They've had two of them tonight. Mitchell's been able to cash on one. And uh, they're, they've, they've had a couple other turnovers, but they took one Mitchell turnover back or about a 90-yard interception return when Mitchell was threatening to close the score. The score at the time was 20 to six. Mitchell had a first and goal at the four after a nice little drive. It actually put the ball into the end zone, but a penalty was called holding, which backed the Marauders up. A series of penalties backed the Marauders up. And then the throw on a fourth down was intercepted and returned for the touchdown by the Thunder. 
to make it 26 to six at that time. And the Thunder had another drive to uh, close out the first half, had another chance after a Mitchell turnover with 17 seconds left and could not get it in the end zone. A sack on a sack with five seconds left by the Marauders stopped the scoring drive. So we are about ready to get underway here with the second half. Discovery Canyon crowd has traveled pretty well with social distancing to support their squad and they are happy with what their team has been able to do. Mitchell will receive the second half kickoff with plenty of work to do trailing 34 to six. Be interesting to see how the adjustments or any changes or just pep talk that Jeremy Callip, the first year head coach of the Marauders, was able to give his squad at halftime. They have fought, they have made some plays, they have taken advantage and in gaining of Discovery Canyon miscues to create turnovers or take advantage of turnovers to give their offense a chance. The offense still just with some work to do but now they will have a chance here to open the second half. And Clancy puts a foot into it and this is going to carry about eight yards into the end zone. Another touchback for Connor Clancy, the senior kicker. Impressive showing by Mr. Clancy tonight. One missed extra point. One kick out of bounds on a kickoff. The rest of his kickoffs have resulted in touchbacks. And I was watching him. He hit a 43-yarder in practice in the waning minutes of halftime from a practice tee. It hit the crossbar, but it hit the crossbar and skipped over, so it would have counted. And now the Marauders have it first and 20, or first and 10, back at the 20. Davenport under center slaps his hand, gives it off to Garcia, and Garcia is going to get swarmed under about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. And it will bring up second. Well, they'll spot the ball at the 19, so second and 11. Great job by the defensive front for Discovery Canyon all night long. Take a look and see how many Daniel Munn is in there, one of the starters. Silas Janelle has had a nice couple sack night tonight. Quick pass out is deflected at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Pass intended for Biglow. But again, it was deflected by that defensive front for the Thunder. Eli Scott, the right defensive end, still in the ball game. Silas, the other defensive end, they get into position, ready to get after Davenport. Davenport almost intercepted for the second time. Justin Pruitt had it in his hands, could not come up with the interception. Osvaldo Sanchez, the intended receiver for the Marauders. And that will bring up fourth and 11 for the Marauders.
Sen Sanchez will drop back to his 10. Pruitt and Emmons will stand at the 50. Another good kick by Sanchez. But first took a Discovery Canyon bounce and then corrected itself and it will be down at the Discovery Canyon 49 yard line when they finally put it down. It'll be first and 10. So the Marauders three and out on the first possession. And coming out to start the second half will be Passion, Kenneth Passion. Motion from the wing, Passion with the keeper. And he'll be stopped after a short gain of three, bring up second and seven. Trevin Alicio, the backup quarterback for the Thunder, got in, played a large portion of the second quarter, but now Passion back to get the reps right after, after halftime. And now a delayed pitch, nice motion by the Thunder and down the sidelines and into the end zone. That is a 49-yard jump. That is Michael Hanna, the senior, with the touchdown for the Thunder from 49 yards out. Third option in that double wing option formation. And the Thunder are able to cash 10.02 on the clock. Clancy on for the extra point. And again, pressure off the side, but Clancy able to deliver. Edward Scott hasn't gotten to a ball tonight on the kick, but he has gotten very close on a couple of occasions. And now our score is 41 to six in favor of the Thunder. 35 point advantage. In the six games between 2012 and 2017 that these two teams played, the Thunder scored 299 points in those six contests, so averaging just under 50 points per ball game while allowing 10. And with 10 minutes left to go in the third, they are on pace to eclipse that possibly. Of course, we will get a running clock here if they achieve a 40 point lead. The Thunder, except for a couple early mistakes, it can be, I think, accounted to first game jitters, first game nerves. Uh, 41 points on the board just after halftime. Clancy puts it into the end zone for touchback. And once again, that one hit the end line. So a good strong boot. Very reminiscent of another local kicker that we have seen who is now getting paid to kick for the Las Vegas Raiders, Daniel Carlson, out of TCA. Carlson was actually drafted by the Vikings and that didn't work out, but got signed as a free agent by the Raiders. 
And now he is making a living with the Raiders in Sioux City. Mitchell comes out, spreading the formation once again. Handoff inside, but just a swarming defense by the Thunder. Nowhere to run for the Marauders, and that is Ty Stewart now, the 5'10 senior, in at tailback on that carry. Stewart in for Garcia. Stewart a little bit bigger of a back. Snap comes back, trying the right side again, out into the flat, and this time the Marauders were able to complete it. And breaking away for the first down. Ralph Cushion, the man with the touchdown for the Marauders. That will be a first down. Looks like they're going to spot the ball at the 30-yard line. That time they ran the receivers a little bit deeper instead of keeping them into block, and that opened things up just a little bit. A lot for that completion. So first down for the Marauders. This time, three receivers to the left of the formation. Out here in the flat, this is caught and immediately tackled. Good open field tackle, but it is a gain of six. The tackle by William Davis, Bigelow with the reception, second and four for the Marauders. Three receivers to the right. Davenport with a hand clap, quickly throws it out to Sanchez. Sanchez has got it at the 41, and that's going to be enough for a first down. So back-to-back -back first downs for the Marauders. And there's a lot of starters on that defense for DCC, so this is not against the backups. Let's see if the Marauders can keep it going with 8.05 to go in the third. This one bounces back to Davenport over the middle, and it's going to be picked. Hawking it, watching it all the way. And down the sidelines for the touchdown. and returned all the way in for the Thunders that was Matt Begari with the interception playing safety just a sophomore change in kicker now And it is up and good. This time it was Sam James, the sophomore, for the extra point conversion. And our score is 48 to 6. A 42 point lead for Discovery Canyon will put us into a running clock situation for the rest of the ball game. But a little bit of something just before the mistake for Mitchell to uh, take a little right in, if nothing else, and to go to work. That offense will get another chance. A jubilant sideline for DCC. Crosby household out on the east side of Colorado Springs. 48 to 6 is our score. And 
And another touchback for Clancy. expect a wholesale change and looking down at the numbers on that Discovery Canyon defense I see a lot of numbers that weren't there before Matt Nagari stays back at the safety position Quickly out to the left side, Davenport unable to connect with Garcia, who's back in the ball game for the Marauders. And they will call that a lateral or a backward pass. Loss of five, second and 15 for the Marauders. Flag stopping the play and his motion against the Marauders. So the ball moved back inside the 10 yard line now. Second and 20. Give it straight up the middle and nowhere to go into the teeth of that backup defense for the Thunder. And timeout taken by Jeremy Tallon and the Rogers sideline. Timeout 302 left to go here in the third quarter. It is all DCC 48 to 6 is our score. What makes Colorado Springs School District 11 the standout choice for excellence in education? Some may say it's a dedicated and talented staff who are devoted to the educational learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. Marauders back on the field. Third and 20 from the 10. Davenport back, throwing down the middle, connects. Out across the 30 yard line, that'll be a pickup of 21 and first down. So a gutsy call, they go for it. Ty Stewart with the reception. They'll spot the ball at the 32, so a pitch and catch of 22. Stewart finding that little bit of a seam in the DCC zone. Now three receivers right, H back right. And this is Edward Scott. Scott makes the, the catch. Gets ahead for about eight. So the way Mitchell looks to be attending, and Ed Scott got hurt on that last catch and tackle, and he goes to the ground. He might have been able to hurt, hear the coaches hollering for him to get on the ground as he was hobbling. Mitchell was trying to increase the tempo. But Scott is down. 
5'10", 180-pound junior. Scott actually spent some time at quarterback last year with the injury to Philip Tillotson. There you see our score, 48 to six. And a new advantage for the coaches when it comes to film review and things like that, the district will have drone coverage for coach review and whatnot throughout the season. And there you see the drone down on the sideline. And a big hand for Scott as he gets up and makes his way to the sideline under his own power. He doesn't look real happy that uh, he had to come out for a play. Inside of two minutes. And caught across the middle for another first down. Up to the 42 yard line, Sanchez with the reception for the Marauders. Davenport, Davenport thrown down the middle on this one. Well over the intended receiver's head. The intended receiver down there was Cushion. And that will bring up second and 10 for the Marauders as we are about to end the third quarter. You see the time ticking away, 45 seconds and counting. Marauders to counter that pass rush of DCC is spreading the field and trying to find an opening in the quick passing. This one's tipped and intercepted. And tackled down at the 45 yard line. Didn't see who made the interception for DCC make the identification my apologies but another turnover by the marauders and there is the end of quarter number three here on week number one a very late six weeks late week number one here for high school football in the pikes peak region District 11, the standout choice for excellence in education. Some may say it's a dedicated and talented staff who are devoted to the educational learning of our students. Others may say it's the award-winning learning options available to all students, no matter their grade level. Whether it's online, hybrid, or in-person learning, D11 welcomes all learners to achieve excellence through diversity. Serving the unique needs of all students, we dare to empower our students to profoundly impact our world, and we stand ready to inspire every mind. And we are back ready to start the fourth quarter. And a change again at quarterback for Discovery Canyon. He saw some time in the second quarter and I bet the fourth quarter will be his. That is Trevin Alisio. Motion, he'll give it up the middle. Big hole off the right, bouncing it to the right hand side. And that is Corbin Johnson with the carry. Johnson will be ahead for a gain of four. Second down and six. Yeah. 
Short gain on the play off the left-hand side into Mitchell territory at the 48-yard line. Bring up third and three. John Mitchell going deep to his bench now. Nice luxury to have in this shortened season. And here's a turnover, or near turnover. Bad pitch from Alessio to Darby Becton. And Scott Dixon, or check that, Edward Scott, close enough for the Marauders, turns into a loss of eight, and fourth and 10 coming up for the Thunder. High snap over the head of the punter, chased down, and great job of getting it away and then getting a great roll out of it. And it will be down at the 33 yard line. And we will turn over possessions. Sam James able to gather that in and get the kick away. Good job keeping his composure. 9.43 to go. And the Thunder by 42. Now the officials talking about things and they set the ball down at the 32. Looks like Mitchell's gonna come straight out of the huddle and to the line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Motion out in the flat. The catch is made. And a good game for a gain of six out there. For the Marauders, that is Ty Stewart. Second and four. Macy Davenport, the 5'5 senior quarterback, taking his lumps tonight. He has been under heavy duress. Now a four-man rush. Three receivers to the right for the Marauders, the near side of the screen. Throw it out in the flat and incomplete. Unable to come in with it. That time was Stewart. Just a simple little swing pass out into the flat. Stewart unable to gather it in and use his speed to make something happen. Had some room out there on the sidelines as Mitchell had loaded the Thunder defense to this side with three receivers. Now with three receivers to the left side, top of the screen. Davenport, another low snap. This one gathered in by Sanchez. Sanchez has the first down and he'll be just shy of the midfield strike. Pick up on the play of 12 and a Mitchell first down. 7-16 left to go in the game. Three receivers to the left. Three by one, left to right. Good snap this time. Give it to Stewart around the left-hand side. Stewart turns the corner and is down inside the 35-yard line, close to the 33. And that'll be another Mitchell first down as he gets out of bounds. But the clock continues to run. So Mitchell able to accomplish some things against this Second defense of Discovery Canyon. Let's see if they can finish this drive. Stewart in the backfield. 
now with Davenport. Three receivers to the right. Over the middle into double coverage and incomplete. And the Marauder sideline wanting a flag that they are not going to get for the interference. Makes it second and 10. Oh, they are going to get the pass interference. George Demetrio giving the sign. So move it down inside the 20, spotted at the 18 yard line. But a dangerous throw by Davenport into double coverage. Got bailed out a little bit that time. Davenport back now with the pump fake. Going into the end zone and that one is intercepted, but I think we're gonna have a pass interference on Discovery Canyon to wipe the interception away. Alessio came down with the ball on the interception, but we'll wait for the call. A lot of contact by the Thunder on the Mitchell receiver. Pass interference, Discovery Canyon, wipe away the interception. And Mitchell will move inside the 10 down to the nine. That'll be an automatic first down and first and goal for the Marauders. 4.25 on the clock. It's not really going to change the outcome of the game, but if you're the Marauders and you can put one in here, you've got some momentum to build from going into next week. And in this shortened season with a brand new coach, Now we have the officials, 25 seconds on the game clock. I'm not sure what the officials have stopped play for. Mitchell at the line. And the clock once again starts. Quick pass to the left flat for Garcia. And Garcia trying to get out of bounds on that left side. It's down to the five yard line. Gain of four on the play. A few first game things to clean up for Discovery Canyon. And I'm sure Sean Mitchell will get the staff together and they'll have it cleaned up for next week. For the Marauders, a lot to work on, including pass protection. Three minutes to go, Garcia takes the handoff, works his way to the left side, down close to the one yard line. Will be third and one. So now they change the scoreboard to second and goal. Davenport gives to Garcia. Garcia trying to slip a tackle, cannot do it. Good penetration by the Thunder and then grabbing the ankle of Garcia presented, prevented that from going anywhere. Just over two minutes to go here in this one and third and two for the Marauders now. Two yards for Pater. Ty Stewart in the backfield with Davenport to his left. Fake it and a keeper by Davenport. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown on the left side, just sneaking into the left corner.
And one of the Marauders still down. Looks like some cramping issues getting tended to by the trainers. So Mitchell able to complete that drive. We are approaching 60 seconds left to go in this ball game as they tend to the in injured Marauder. Again, it doesn't matter much to the outcome with Discovery Canyon comfortably on top, but it's some positive momentum for the Marauders to take into the film session and take into next week. Again, it's just a six-week schedule instead of the usual 10 here along the front range. Week seven starts the playoffs and all teams will play a seventh game, but the seventh game will be determined later in the season. Teams not making the playoffs will find somebody to, uh, and this is Edward Scott looking for the goal line. Did he get in? He did, he stretched across for the two point conversion. 48 to 14. We are inside the final 10 seconds with this running clock. But something to build on for the Marauders going into week two. And there is the final gun, the end of the first game of week one of high school football back here in the Pikes Peak region. Thank you so much for the tune in. We hope you enjoyed the coverage we were able to provide. And we will be have a full slate of coverage. Tomorrow we will have Vista Ridge at Palmer, right here at the stadium. And then Saturday at 3 o'clock, it will be Valor and Gordy. Um, in each of the District 11 games will go to the school's respective uh, websites. And as the, as the Thunder gather to sing their fight song for the home crowd, victorious, they go to 1-0 after week one. And the Mitchell Marauders fall to 0-1, looking for the, looking for, better results in week number two.